presentation on an overview of probabilistic snowfall. My name is Andrew LaConta. I'm a forecaster with the National Weather Service in Blacksburg, Virginia. And I'm going to teach you a little bit more about this probabilistic snowfall so that you can uh, better use it for your decision making. So what is it? Um, let's, I'm going to give you just a quick introduction to what what probabilistic snowfall is. A couple of years ago, the National Weather Service began testing a new methodology for communicating the range of possibilities and snowfall amounts at a few weather forecast offices. This new methodology incorporates snowfall forecasts from over 70 different domestic and international weather models, as well as human forecaster input. Based on positive feedback from a host of NWS partners, the experiment has now since expanded to other NWS offices. The product will be made available for the NWS Blacksburg area of responsibility beginning on February 1st, 2017. The purpose of this new methodology is to better communicate the range of possibilities to decision makers in addition to our current snowfall forecast. We will be providing you with the official NWS forecast, which is the one that should be planned on, but we're also going to give you information on what should at least be expected and a reasonable worst case accumulation along with the chance of exceeding selected snowfall amounts. The ultimate goal is to lead to better decision making and while the general public will have access to this information as well, the product is especially geared to those stakeholders and users who understand that snowfall forecasts have some element of uncertainty but need to make advanced plans for a range of possibilities including the best and worst case scenarios. We want to draw your attention to our new winter weather website, which, which is now live as of February 1st, 2017. The website is listed at the top of the slide, www.weather.gov slash rnk slash winter. You may also navigate to our homepage, and at the bottom of the page, you can click on the icon labeled winter weather amongst the various pictured icons, and you can see that on the top right of the slide. We would encourage you to bookmark this web page for easy access in the future. And a picture of what the website looks like is shown on the left. And there is more content as you scroll below this, below that little image there. Um, and as far as additional information that we'll cover in this presentation that is not shown on this slide here, includes snowfall exceedance probabilities, which is plotted both on a table and as a graphical map. So we wanted to start also by giving you kind of an overview of the probabilistic snowfalls prob product availability because that will change depending on at what point in the event that you're, that you're in. Uh, remember that prob snow graphics are designed for planning purposes only. So the probability of range graphics are only available before snow starts. You will actually see a difference in our winter weather web pages look and feel once we are in the event. This is diagrammed on the bottom part of the slide. Compare the difference between the two images. You'll note that only the official NWS forecast displayed in the during event stage with text informing you that range of pro possibility graphics and exceedance probabilities are not available while snow is ongoing. This look and feel change happens when the, when the first public information statement listing of the observed snowfall is issued. Secondly, prop snow information is currently only available for impactful storms within 72 hours of expected impact to the region. In other words, this means that potential winter storms beyond 72 hours will not be displayed as there are too many details at these longer ranges that can change. You may call our office to speak with our forecasters at any time about these longer term events, but all only generalities could really be provided to you. It also means that in situations with several snow events within 72 hours, storms bringing likely a lesser impact would be excluded from these prob snow graphics for the, for the larger snow event. Now we'll go over a quick tutorial of the new products. The next couple slides will cover the snowfall ranges. 
And in this slide here, we'll show you at first the most likely snowfall, which is the official National Weather Service Blacksburg forecast. This is what users should expect to receive from a forecasted winter storm. We recommend sharing this information onto the public if you field questions asking how much snowfall will we get. Clicking the range or point link on the top will convert the image to either a point snow amount or a broader snowfall range. Next, we'll talk about what the lower and upper end rate of the snowfall ranges of a forecasted winter storm are, which are the images to the, le to the left and the right of the most likely snowfall. These speak to what the storm could do if the storm ultimately evolves in particular ways. So we'll start with the image on the left, which is a, a reasonable minimum snowfall amount. In other words, users can expect to see this much snowfall at a minimum. This could be the case if the storm track misses our area, the, snow, the storm system itself is weaker, or if temperatures are warm enough to support a wintry mix or rain cutting into the snowfall amounts. Likewise, the image on the right describes the upper end of what a forecasted snowfall could produce. This graphic corresponds to what would be a reasonable maximum snowfall amount, or you can think of it as a worst case scenario. Users should use this graphic to get a sense what the forecasted event could do if the storm overproduced. And this could happen if precipitation were to stay as all snow in a mix in an expected mixed precipitation event, if more snow is expected. A slower or stronger storm is anticipated. In other words, it's snowing over a longer period of time. Snowfall rates are heavier, or some combination of the foregoing. Another new product that we'll be unveiling is snowfall exceedance probabilities. Put simply, this provides what the chance is of meeting or exceeding certain threshold snowfall amounts that will be equal to or greater than particular values. Users can hover over the small thumbnailed images along the top row to change the graphic in the center for different thresholds. This information can be of value to those who need to make decisions based on the likelihood of meeting or exceeding snowfall amounts. For example, what are the chances I see four inches or more of snow? And the same information is also available in a tabular format. A list of selected cities is provided as a default. However, by using the county pull-down in the center, users will have access to this table for a wider range of cities and towns in particular county. This can be useful for various county officials or schools. Provided in the leftmost column is the same at least potential for and the official National Weather Service forecast. And again, if you, if you press the switch to range button, it will allow you to see snowfall ranges if that is preferred over point-based snowfall amounts. We hope that you found this tutorial very helpful. As with any new product, it can only get better with your feedback. You may feel free to email Phil Heisel at any time at the email provided, but also make sure to enter in your feedback to National Weather Service Headquarters, and you could do that through the the links highlighted in the red box on this slide. Your valuable input can help shape changes to this product NWS-wide. Thank you so much for your attention and we, and we hope we find this useful for you.